trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and oh, we'll see how great, how great. I remember when Dalton was 13, sounded just like that. <laughs> Fourth, 15. <laughs> it still sounds like that. <laughs> hey, ain't it good to be here? Amen. Amen. It's good to see everybody. Uh, I'll try to mind the Lord. I told Derek I'd had something else on my mind for a few days. And I hope I've minded the Lord. I didn't do something that was on my mind and calling somebody to come here tonight and I've studied and had a couple thoughts on my mind I'll try to I'll try to give you what I feel like the Lord would have us to to hear come on now they have some fun don't you know that? They have a good time. Amen. We can too. We can too. If you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter number 22. I want to try to finish. I 
can't get away from this right here. I want to try to finish with David tonight. I have read on and on about him. One of the most interesting lives of any man that's ever lived. Uh, from success to failure to fear to death to pain to success to failure to fear over and over and over again his life and I read about his death today and we'll look at that sometime how David died but our lives don't have to be that hard we've got David was anointed and the Spirit of God was on him his whole life. But we've got an advantage on David. I know he was a man after God's own heart. Not all that's good. But we've got the Holy Spirit. We can have the mind of Christ. And we have the completed Word of God. And we've got a body. Right here. We, we don't have to struggle as bad as he st had to struggle. Has anybody been chased into a cave today and anybody attempted to kill you? Has anybody felt like that though? Before? Lots of heads nodding. Remember this verse? I read it a hundred times in the last two services about David. It's 1 Samuel uh, 16 verse 18 it said then answered one of the servants and said behold I have seen the son of Jesse a Bethlehemite that he's cunning and playing and mighty a valiant man a man of war prudent in all matters and a comely person the Lord is with him how many of you remember that verse and it seems like the preacher just keeps on saying it Wednesday and Sunday you won't quit saying it I want you to keep that picture in your mind of this young king and we talked about him Sunday and how he made a mess and it cost a lot of people and cost himself and the Bible said that he changed his behavior and feigned himself mad in their hands in the enemy's hands he went to the Philistines scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard so much that the Philistines didn't even want him he acted insane crazy have you ever got so mad you acted crazy? Raise your hand if anybody in here has ever got so mad you've acted crazy. I'll never forget one time I got mad and hauled off and kicked an old hollow door right here and folded back and laid me out. I kicked it good and it hit me real good. And we've all, we've all acted crazy. Husbands and wives, we've all had times that if anybody would have seen us, Doug, it would have been so embarrassing. If anybody would have hurt us, it would have hurt our feelings. We've all had times when it's just come out and you wished it never had it. Everybody in here has messed up and made mistakes and showed their hind ends, and we all have. Amen? Amen. Amen. We've all acted crazy and mad and stupid. Out of control, Mike. We've all acted that way. Yeah. The cactus kicked you back too, didn't it? <laughs> We've all done stuff. We've all been embarrassed. We've all said, I wish I hadn't have done that. And we've all at times, I'm sure, looked to the world like, is he really a Christian? Would a Christian do that? We've all embarrassed ourselves. So here's David. Let's look at this next chapter right quick and learn a lesson. Through it, I'll try to hurry and we'll go home. But let's look at David and uh, try to learn something right here. Verse, let's start in verse number one. I'll try to get you out of here. David therefore departed thence and escaped to a cave, uh, Aldum, Aldum. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, listen to this, they went down thither to him. He's a madman. Sid won two verses earlier. He was slobbering. 
and spitting and throwing a fit and drawing on the wall and Randall acting so crazy that the Philistine king said, I don't even want him here. Get him out of here. So he went to a cave and his brethren heard that he was there. So they went to him and listen to this. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone Listen, that discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them. And there were about him 400 men. What did they see? Did they see a man cunning in, in playing? Mighty and valiant man, a man of war, prudent in matters, a comely person, and the Lord is with him? Did they see a maniac that was scribbling on the wall and uh, drooling into his beard and full of spit coming down on his face and acting crazy? No. They saw the anointing of God and the power of God and the grace of God on this man. Now, when you get up in the morning and uh, your wife may look over at you and say, boy, you really done good last night the way you acted. Or it might be the other way around. Or you might do something when you go into work and your co-workers are looking at you because of the shine that you cut. Anybody heard it called a shine lately? He cut a good shine. That's talk where I come from. He cut a shine. We've all cut shines and we feel like we blew it. We feel like it's over, but that's not what God saw. And that's not what these people saw. They saw the anointing of God and the power of God and they run to Him. Everybody that was hurting, everybody was in need, everybody that needed something in their life, run. They knew one person they'd saw God on. They hadn't saw Him on Saul. They hadn't saw Him on uh, Saul's help, but they'd saw Him on David. And they said, let's get to David. Amen. Amen. When you mess up, when you fall, when you fail, when you feel like the enemy's come and he's got everything that you've got in his hands and he's going to take it away from you, remember who you are. Remember the anointing that God put on you. Remember your salvation. Remember that you're a born-again child of God. See, uh, uh, getting saved, I said it Sunday, uh, getting saved changes our behavior, but changing our behavior doesn't get us saved. And still, even in the middle, when God saved me, Alan, when He saved the day that He saved me, He didn't pull me out of sin and say, now you're on your own, walk this path the best you can and try to make it to heaven. He knew that I was going to mess up. He knew that I was going to fail. He knew that I was going to make mistakes. He knew David, being a man after his own heart, being chosen of the Lord, anointed a bear slayer, a lion slayer, a giant slayer, a... a a mighty valiant man, prudent in all matters, was going to fail and mess up miserably. Sounds a lot like us, don't it? Or am I the only one? So now David's a captain. And he's got him 400 men. And listen here what he does. Verse number 5. He, he takes his mom and daddy and he gets them in a safe place. And verse number 5, he goes to the prophet. And the prophet God said unto him, Abide not in the hold. Depart and get in the land of Judah. And David departed and came into the forest of Harith. Now listen. I just want you to hear this story. Because you ought to hear it. Listen to how things turn. David's got him 400 men. He's got him an army. He's getting ready to go wear the Philistines out. So things ought to be good for a little while, right? Things are looking up. Things should be getting easier, Doug, any time now, right? We've said our prayers. We've took our vitamins. We've drunk our milk. We've went to church. We've done everything that we're supposed to do. Things ought to be getting better. Smile at me. But listen to this. When Saul heard that David was discovered, that old enemy, he says, oh boy, she's praying more than usual. Oh boy, Derek's getting up 30 minutes earlier and reading his Bible. It's not that you're behaving better, but you're hungry and thirsty after God. And the Bible says if you hunger and thirsty after God, you'll be filled. And man, he sees that. And he gets scared after that. And when Saul heard that David was, had been discovered or was around, listen to what he'd done and the men that were with him. Now Saul abode in Gibba under a tree in Ramah having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Get this picture. We've got this king, the man-chose king, that's a head taller than everybody else. 
standing under a tree with his, his spear in his hand. Is that what it said right here? He'd already thrown, had he thrown that thing at David yet? But then he ends up throwing it at him twice, right? And almost killing him. But listen to this. Then Saul said to his servants that stood with him, Here now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands? Listen, of captains and hundreds, all of a sudden paranoia is starting to take hold. Don't you think the devil's getting paranoid right now? Don't you think he's getting mad and paranoid and getting more wicked by the... I'll tell you who's as mean as anybody. That's somebody that's paranoid. Anybody ever been paranoid? Raise your hand if you... I, I'm not just, just talking about a drug-induced paranoia. I'm talking about something's wrong and it ain't paranoid. I'm talking about everything went good at church on Sunday, then you're riding the, down the road or going to work on Monday morning and something's wrong and you don't know what and you feel like the, the cab of the truck's going to cave in on you. Paranoid. Saul's that way by the enemy. He's lots of backslidden Christians are the meanest, hatefulest, disturbed people ever. The paranoia of Satan all over them. That's a perfect picture right here. Listen to what he said. That you've all conspired against me. Now he's mad at his own men, and there is none that showeth me, listen to this, that my son has made a league. He's turned on his son, but he's right. With the son of Jesse, and there is none of you that are sorry for me. <laughs> Showeth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as this day. And I want you to listen to this verse. Then answered Doeg. And I checked out on my phone today, and I am saying that right. Doeg. The Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nod. To Amalek, the son of Atub. Now listen to this one chapter before. Verse number 7 and 21. Now certain of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, talking about when David went into Elimelech, into the, the presence of the, the holy place. Detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg the Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. Verse number 7 right there hid in that chapter. When David went in there and lied to the priest. When he went in there and conned Elimelech into giving him the bread. Into giving him the sword of Goliath. When he went in there and said things that he shouldn't have said. There was somebody standing over there in that corner. Today if you done it there'd be somebody doing just like this. Right. <laughs> Believe me. They'll get you. But there'd be somebody doing like this. He's listening. David thought he's getting away with it. He thought he's going to get by with it, and he might would have. But really, it wasn't God's will for him to get away with it. Everybody in here, you've got a dough egg in your life. You've got people in your life that you talk to that cost you trouble. You've got people that'll cost you problems. You got people that listen. How many of you know somebody that you, you talk to or you like that you tell them something and it'd be told to somebody else in the morning? Just one? Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> listen to what happens, though. Let's look on back to this scripture, and I'll, I'll try to hurry. I don't want to keep you here all night, but this is a, this is a lot like something that happened to us. Where was I at right here? Who's reading with me? Anybody? Ten. All right. And he inquired of the Lord for him. Now, I don't know that. I don't know that Elimelech ever acquired of the Lord for David right there. But he gave him the bread, the victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, and the king sent. To call Limelech the priest, the son of Atub, and all the father's house, and the priests that were in Nod, and they came all of them to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Atub. And he answered, Hear my, my Lord. Now this might be boring reading, but it wasn't boring if you was there. 
And it ain't boring whenever your life's on the line and your conversation gets you in a mess or you're around people that ain't got their best interest in for you or you get in a bind or get in trouble. And believe me, it'll happen to everybody in here if you live long enough. Amen. Amen. Listen. Listen to what he said. And Saul said unto, unto him, talking to the priest, Why have you conspired against me? Thou and the son of Jesse, and thou hast given him bread and a sword and has acquired for the Lord for him that he should rise up against me to lie in wait at this day. Now, did Elimelech do that? Well, did he try to set Saul up to have him killed? No, he was lied to. He was tricked. He was deceived. Listen, and Elimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among thy servants as David, which is the king's son in the law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thy house? He said, There's nobody been as good to you as David. Did I then begin to inquire of God for him, and be it far from me? Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father, for thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more that is the truth and the king said thou shalt surely die Elimelech thou and thy father's house I'll be done in just a minute here we got it. the king standing before the priest and the priest begging for his life because of lies and sin and trouble you know what we need we just need good old fashioned straight truth if it hurts, it hurts. If it offends, it offends. If it bothers, it bothers. So be it. Let it bother. Let it hurt. Let it have whatever consequences truth has. But when you're in a lie, and when you lie, I preached on that Sunday, I'll preach it again. Lies hurt everybody. Lies lead to other lies. I've stood up for people that told me a lie, and it made me look as foolish as they did. But we can do something with the truth. You, you cannot bring a lie up here to this altar and leave with that same lie and leave justified by the Lord. Hear me tonight. You cannot come to this altar if you have lies in your life. Now, this might be why the Lord had me here tonight, but you cannot come to this altar and get down on your knees and pray and get up justified in the Lord if you've not repented and turned from that lie. Lies will hurt and and. You take them out with you and they lead to more lies and they lead to more lies and you make other people lie and it's just a damning process all the way around. Amen. Amen. Does everybody know that? Amen. Who's been caught trapped in a lie before? Who's been caught of your own doing? Raise your hand. Okay, now who's been caught of other people's doing? That's even worse, Larry. That's even worse. Because you don't know what they've said. You don't know what they've added since last time they told you. Smile at me tonight. How many of you good at lying? I ain't looking. Can you imagine that picture, Derek? That priest begging for his life, please don't kill me. I've not done nothing wrong. Please don't kill me. Don't kill my family. Crying and begging for his life. Get that picture tonight. And the king said unto the footman that stood about him, Turn and slay the priest of the Lord. That don't even sound right, does it? Because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priest of the Lord. Thank God. There's some good men still there. And the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned and fell upon the priest and slew on the, that day fourscore and five persons and did wear a linen ephod. Listen. And of the city of the priest smote he with the edge of the sword both men and women, children and suckling and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. So he killed 85 priests plus women and children. Plus little babies like that. Plus women like their mamas. Plus the priests, the men of God. Because he was on an insane ego trip. A paranoid, 
insane ego trip that he couldn't stand it. He was so mad. People are the same today. They get offended. They get hurt. They lose their minds. I'll tell you what will make people the maddest of anything you can do. That's tell them the truth. You tell people the truth, you're going to be in for a fight. Anybody watch debates? Anybody watch Ben Shapiro? Any of those debates? Any of those people? I, I like the Kirk guy. I, I like some of the women. I, I worry about Shapiro because he's not saved. He's a Jew. He doesn't, he doesn't believe Jesus was the, was the Messiah. He does not believe that. So you take some of the stuff he says and you leave some of it. But they'll, they'll argue with the liberal crowd. And Ron, they'll never have one answer come from their side. Just arguments that are insanity. And they get so mad and they get so angry. But religious people are worse. People that claim to be something that they're not and get caught on it are way worse. Sometimes hurt church people are way worse. I've seen them get meaner. I've seen doors kicked off the hinges of a church. Don't fall into that. Be careful who you're around. Be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you let who you are out to. Look what it cost David. Look what it cost this priest and his family and their families. I'm talking about bad behavior, but I'm talking about lies and I'm talking about just the bitterness that come from this. I don't know about you, but that bothers me. And I see it today. Does anybody know somebody that's bitter? Does anybody know somebody that's bitter about a church? Raise your hand if you know somebody bitter about church. How many words could you get out to them in the morning if you went and talked to them? Not many. And if you keep talking, what's going to happen? Would you leave now? I don't want to talk about that. You can talk about bad stuff. You can talk about politics. We can talk about abortion. We can talk about the LGBTQT or whatever it is. We can talk about all that, but if you start talking about salvation, if you talk, start talking about right and wrong and fearing God and the love of God, you're going to have somebody offend the great fight. But don't be that way. Don't you fall into that. Listen, I'm done right here. I want you to listen to this. and This is what stood out to me. This is what I thought about preaching the whole time, Bob. Chase rabbits all night. Listen, and the king said, I already read that, verse 20 now. And one of the sons of Elimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Atar, escaped and fled after David. And Abathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. And listen to what David said. And David said unto Abathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there. Get a hold of that. Right here's where I wanted to get all night, and it just took me this long to get there. David knew it, Ron, when he said it. He knew it when it happened. He knew it when he'd done it. He knew it when he told the lies, and he looked over, and he saw that guy standing there looking at him. Have you ever said something in front of somebody, and they look over, and somebody else is listening to your conversation? He knew, Kevin, as soon as it come out of his mouth, I have messed up. David should have fixed that, though. Right then. David should have done something. David should have went to Saul. He should have, he should have confessed. He should have done whatever he had to do to fix it. He might would have got him killed. But I doubt it. I think the Lord would have protected him. He was afraid. He was scared. Anybody ever said something when you said it, it scared you? One time, me and Kevin was lifting weights, and my mom had called and told me to get them home. Do you remember that? And I, 
I thought we'd hung up on it, and I said something I would have never said before. It just come out of my mouth. And I heard on the other end of the phone, what would you say? And I said, uh, I got to go home now. But when it comes out of a Christian's mouth, when it comes out of your mouth, when it comes out of my mouth, and we realize when it happens, we ought to take care of it. We ought to fix whatever we've messed up. We ought to try to take care of it because if it's a lie, it's just going to chase us down. It's going to follow us. It's going to hurt us. And it's going to hurt other people. And if it's hurtful, then it's just going to hurt till you fix it. And Ryan, if we let it go, it's just going to hurt worse and it's going to hurt worse and it's going to hurt worse. Some people are not going to res receive an apology. Some people are not going to forgive you. You could say you're sorry all day and they're not going to take it, but it's not your job for them to forgive you. It's your job to apologize. It's your job to try to do better. What did Andy Griffith say? He figured out how to do what, Derek? Put his whole foot in his mouth. <laughs> but the cost of our words sometimes and the cost of our bad behavior, it, it costs a lot. It costs a lot. People don't forgive it. I, I, I'll just give you an example of something I dealt with yesterday at lunchtime. We was talking about Kelsey, is that his name? That yep, football player. Coach. And I said, you, you know, you just, that's not right. He should have never done that. He, and I said, you know, I don't condone what he did. Well, about a year ago, I come in on the job one morning, and the sheep droppers had took their mud, and instead of putting it back in the bucket, they threw it in my trash can. And that flew all over me, and I just went and took that trash can, and I dumped it in their mud bucket, filled it up with sawdust, Put the lid back on. <laughs> nice. You know when I told them boys though that I just couldn't justify what that Kelsey one had done, and both of the guys that worked for me said, "Well, what if that bunch would have seen you the way you acted over that sheep drop mud in that trash can?" And I felt about that hard. I said, "I wish a hundred times I'd have just went and bought a new trash can." They don't forgive. No, we all do that. We've all done it. We've all done it. And you're going to do it again. You know what? You can come up here and pray tonight that you never tell another lie or you never say something you shouldn't say. Now, you can't just let people run over you. You can't let people abuse you. You can't let people get away with stuff all the time. But that's a part of the church's problem. We've let, The church has let people get away with stuff way too long. I mean, that ain't right either. People have got to be called out on stuff. Judgment begins at the house of the Lord. But we can't go out here and abuse people or, or justify ourselves in front of sinners by doing what was the Pharisees done? They would strain out a gnat and swallow a camel? Don't that sound like sometimes what we do? I know this was... Brandon, and I wasn't even sure about it. I got another message that maybe, I don't know. The Lord knows. Maybe somebody in here is dealing with something. Maybe you're dealing with, maybe you're dealing with a lie. We hit on that for maybe you're dealing with a lie. Matter of fact, I'd be willing to bet everything is that several people in here dealing with a lie right now. I could say raise your hand if you're dealing with a lie, but I don't think nobody would. But it'd be a good time to get it fixed up, wouldn't it? I'm done. Stand to your feet. Lord, help us tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word, for your anointing. God, you know everything, and I'm sure glad you do. Lord, help us tonight. Move for your people. Lord, I pray that we love one another and help one another. God, you tell us when to speak and tell us when to listen. Help us to be wise and Lord, all of, our, all of our actions, Lord, that we wouldn't cost other people or hurt other people or cost lives. Lord, that our behavior, how I many it affects. Lord, help us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.